To start the lesson about Turkey, let me share with you a brief history of Turkey farming here in the Philippines. For Philippine Turkeys directly trace their ancestry to these two colonizers, Spain in the 1500s and United States of America in the 1900s. Our story begins in the Mexican port of Acapulco, which linked the markets of Europe and Asia via the Manila Galleon trade. In the mid-16th century, enterprising Spaniards brought pavo or Spanish turkeys. Spanish turkeys descended from the wild birds domesticated by the Aztecs and other Mesoamerican people over the previous 2,000 years were small but tough, highly resistant to disease and always ready to lay a good clutch of eggs. Farmed alongside chickens in homesteads and barrios across the Philippines, they soon became familiar as pavo and flourished as free-range fowl, foraging in the brush for seeds, worms, and insects. Some 400 years passed, but turkey farming never really took off. It remained restricted mostly to backyard farms and private flocks. It was then the Americans introduced new blood. The broad-breasted bronze turkey is far larger and heavier than the Spanish-introduced turkey, growing to about 10 kilograms. Unlike the scrappy South American bird, though, the newcomer came from colder climes, resulting in disease outbreaks, higher mortalities in Filipino flocks, and small clutches of eggs. Both turkeys are predominantly brownish-black with a coppery sheen adorned by white bars along the wings, tail, and breast. Together, these two birds provided the basis for turkey farms across the Philippines, which, unlike chicken and duck farms, are still largely a niche market. A shame since turkey not only grow larger than chickens but are actually easier to raise and their meat is more expensive. Now let's talk about types and characteristics of turkey. Turkey, as well as all other poultry, is described and classified using a number of different criteria. Number one, kind, which describes whether the poultry is a turkey, chicken, ducks, or others. Next is class, describes how the poultry is categorized such as fryer or roaster. Third is grade, which describes the quality of the bird based on a standard and guidelines. The common grades for poultry are A, B, and C, with A being the designation for the best quality. Style describes the bird as being whole, cut into sections, or cut into individual parts. Size or weight, turkeys are specified by individual weight. Next is type, which describes a turkey as being fresh, frozen, or hard chilled. Next is packaging, specifies how the turkey is packaged at the processing company. Most turkeys are individually wrapped and may be shipped several to a container. Next is temperature, which describes the ideal temperature for fresh, frozen, or hard chilled turkeys for processing, shipping, and storing. And the last one is breed, which is the quality, flavor, size, and the ratio of meat to bone can be affected by the breed of the turkey. For example, White Holland is the breed that is most often raised for commercial purposes because of its quality, flavor, size, and the ratio of meat in relation to its bone. In terms of classes of turkey, the youngest one is the Fryer Roaster, which is a small turkey of 4 to 8 pounds. And this is usually no older than four months of either sex. It has tender flesh and smooth skin and has flexible cartilage. The next one is the young turkey, which is four to eight months old. And it has tender flesh and smooth skin and has firmer cartilage compared to a fryer. Next is yearling. A yearling is a fully matured turkey of either sex. And the flesh is still reasonably tender. And the last one is mature or old. A mature turkey is 15 months or older and is not well suited for roasting because the meat is much tougher and the skin is coarse. Now let's talk about other types of poultry that is used in cookery. First is the pigeon, which the meat has a minimal amount of fat. Young pigeons, or what we call squab, have light and tender meat, 
Older pigeons have dark and tough meat. Next is goose. Meat is flavorful and juicy when young. Fat has a distinct taste but easily taken over by fruity flavors. And the last one is quail, one of the leanest type of poultry. Quails are usually deboned either by hand or mechanically to get maximum yield. Meat from older quails are darker and tougher compared to the meat of younger quails. Now let's talk about introduction to game meats. The word game, for culinary purposes, means animals hunted for food, which means game meats are the flesh of animals hunted in the wild for their meat. Many of these, such as pheasants, partridges, quails, and rabbits, are now rare domestically, yet are still classified as game. The game used in the culinary kitchen today is divided into two types, feathered or furred. Feathered game refers to the remaining birds used in food service applications such as wild goose, pigeon, pheasant, guinea fowl, wild duck, and quail. Furred game, on the other hand, refers to wild animals available from commercial wholesalers such as bear, deer, goat, and rabbit. Game is not normally thoroughly bled. This is the reason it has a noticeably darker colored muscle tissue than that of slaughtered domestic animals. Game purchased from an inspected source is normally prepared and hung correctly. Remember that we are responsible for the wholesomeness of the product what we serve to the consumer. In terms of selecting game meat, age is the major consideration because it determines the method of cooking as to whether it's moist heat method or dry heat method. Mature game birds have jaws which are set. If the bird can be lifted by its lower jaws without signs of breaking, it is an older bird. When buying young birds, look for clean, soft textured feet, pliable breast bones, and round spurs. As birds age, the breast bone becomes hard and brittle, Breast meat becomes tougher and more solid and spurs become longer and sharper. Also, in young partridges, have a pointed feather while in older birds, the feather is rounded. When buying game animals, one have to keep in mind that the ears of the young hares and rabbits splits easily and soft textured. Young rabbits and squirrels will be lighter in weight than older ones. In general, younger birds and animals have a better eating quality. The texture will be less tough and stringy. Meat of younger animals and birds is also more moist. Now let's proceed to types of games and preparation methods. Let's begin with the feather games. First is the goose. There are two classifications, young goose and mature goose or old goose. The young goose may be either sex. Its meat is tender and it has windpipe, which is easily dented. A mature or old goose may be of either sex. It has tough flesh and a hardened windpipe. Goose can be purchased year-round. It is available ready to cook, either fresh or frozen. The meat of goose is sweet, all dark tender and juicy. The popular sizes vary from 4 to 14 pounds of ready-to-cook weight. In terms of preparation, to prepare the goose for cooking, the giblets and neck should be removed. If include from the cavity, if any fat layers are there, it is to be removed. Now, the bird is ready to be stuffed and trussed. The trussed goose is placed in a shallow uncovered pan. The goose can be roasted in a 325 degrees Fahrenheit. In a standard oven during roasting, the fat should be removed from the pan periodically. This will keep the fat color light, not too brown. To test the doneness, the drumstick is turned up and down. The first step in preparing a goose, if it is frozen, is to thaw it under refrigeration. Next is duck. The most famous variety of duck is mallard. It is from the species that all other domesticated varieties of ducks are descended. Other types which are hunted as game include teal, wijon, shoveler, pochard, and scop. These are not meaty birds. They are, however, considered to be good eating. Wild duck is best prepared by roasting. 
To roast a wild duck such as mallard or teal, it is best to salt and season the bird's cavity and under the breast skin two hours or more prior to cooking. To roast the duck, lightly oil the duck with olive oil and place it breast down on the base in roasting pan. Cover and bake in a 450 degrees Fahrenheit for, four, for 25 minutes. Remove the cover from the pan and allow the bird to cook at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for another 30 minutes and ready to serve. Another feathered game is the pheasant. The pheasant is a pleasing table bird which has a mild flavor. There is numerous varieties of pheasant throughout the world, perhaps the most popular of the game birds. Pheasant responds well to hanging. Farm reared birds are sold oven ready, fresh or frozen. Last example under the feathered game is the pigeon. Pigeon is classified as raised or wild. Raised pigeon has rich dark meat that lends itself well to roasting. It is best in preparations where the breast is served rare and thinly sliced on the plate with sauce. Wild pigeon or dove, often tough and strongly flavored, these birds are best suited to casserole, pie, stewing, or braising. Now let's move to third game. First is the boar. Only the meat of the young boar is tender. The meat of older animals need to be hung for two to three days before being used. The flesh should be marinated before cooking to tenderize the meat and reduce the strong gamey flavor. Gamey means having the strong flavor or smell of game, especially when it is slightly tainted. Boar can be roasted, sautéed, or barbecued. Another example of furred game is the deer. Today, the meat of any animal from the deer or cervidae family is called venison, the Latin term venari meaning to hunt. At one time, all game meats were called venison. However, unless the animals are very young, it needs to be hung and marinated. The hunch is the most popular cut, although the loin and fillets also make good eating. Deer, in general, are eaten for their meat and liver, however, smoked elk tongue is considered a delicacy. Next is hare. Hare, though belonging to the family as rabbits, are gamier. They are also larger. Their flesh is darker and has a strong flavor. European young hare need to be hung and can be roasted. The older animals, two years older, should be hung and the meat made into casseroles, stews, and baits. The last example under the third game is the rabbit. The meat of rabbit is generally tender, light, and delicate. It closely resembles chicken in flavor and texture. Rabbit does not need to be hung. There are countless recipes for rabbit pie and stews testifies to this trend.